say about that? <laughs> Sorry, mate. Can't hear you. What you doing to that bear? Yeah, Are you okay? I'm all right. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to call Ross right now on the double. Ross gave you his number. What's wrong with you, man? Supercells all over France right this second. Understand, in the past two weeks, Las Vegas, St. Louis, Chicago, were all decimated by storms of unprecedented ferocity. And you propose that the same could happen here? Absolutely. It's a small planet. My models indicate that there will be no exceptions. Look at the weather forming outside right now. in the meeting, punch in 911. I already punched 911. Can you believe this storm will hit this intensity in Paris and in Europe. Not just Europe. This is a global crisis. Unless we find out what's causing it, the entire planet could be doomed sooner than we think. man, but you better look out your window right this second. I think you all had better come see this. reports car excellent physical conditioning is no solution for crummy time management grab a seat catch up to repeat gay perry just got stomped and before that everything from nevada to chicago in short the whole world has gone off the rails at the same time that our country is facing the greatest recovery effort since 9 11 which is why we here at federal protective services are picking up the slack oh i'm Canceling vacations. Oh, Get back to work. I 
Captain, I was... Save it, Carl. If you're late, it's probably because we were pistol whipping a confession out of someone doing 30 in a school zone. Am I wrong? What I wanted was just for you to congratulate your sister for me. She didn't tell you? Damn, son, they just made her director of FEMA. Well, that should make her happy. And now to introduce to you the new interim director of FEMA, the Secretary of Homeland Security, Jim. Thank you. The unprecedented Category 6 storm has underscored the absolute need for our government to be proactive. That is why the president has chosen Judith Carr to head up FEMA. Her unparalleled record in that organization and her tireless energy will give the American people exactly what they deserve, which is the very best. Ms. Carr? Thanks, Jim. Since the secretary has already revealed my secret identity as Wonder Woman, <laughs> why don't I just take questions? Yes. The president wants to know if she's really up to the job. Running FEMA? Or catching the spear when the electorate realizes she can't make a multi-state tragedy go poof? The worst. I've never seen her rattle. She comes across as credible and authentic on camera. And above all, she's a team player. Hope you're right. Ms. Carr, why do you think you are promoted above so many other qualified people within FEMA? Does the fact that your father is a senator figure into it? Well, it might if my father was part of the party in power. <laughs> Actually, to be honest, I wasn't the first one approached. FEMA is stretched to its limit. It's not an ideal time to take the reins, but maybe I just have more to prove. May I have your attention, please? For those of you I haven't met yet, I'm Judith Carr, and this is the deal. Playing pick up the pieces isn't going to cut it anymore. We've been asked to get ahead of the game, see what's coming, and do something about it before we're called. Wait, we're getting into early warning? Exactly. Am I the only one wondering if this spate of storms is merely coincidental? Here, Paris, in the last two weeks. What are you going to do about the weather? Predict it. There's going to be someone out there who could give us a theoretical background on what has happened and tell us whether or not it is going to happen again. Also, um, Homeland Security has given us a new priority. No matter what comes down the pike, we are to respond to critical governmental infrastructure first. The um, damage caused by Category 6 storms left us very vulnerable to terrorist attack. So it is crucial that government offices, law enforcement, and basic utilities be online and secure first. From now on, we have a lot of tough decisions to make. And if you're at all sentimental, you're definitely in the wrong department. I don't like it either. But those are orders. This is the new policy. Oh, you're still here. <laughs> the ex-boss had this assistant, Jesse. Anyway, we had this friends with benefits thing going, and once he got his hands on this study from NAS about extreme weather in the States. Hmm, I, I know. The one by Ross Duffy, I've read it. Well, actually, you read the edited version. Seems the energy industry didn't like the implication that their byproducts were sending global weather over a cliff. So the White House buried it in plain sight by taking out all the content. Do you happen to know where I could find this, Jesse? <laughs> He's so out of my life. And anyway, he shredded all the original copies. <sighs> Except for this one. Good evening, sir. I'm terribly sorry to bother you here, but in order to better our preparation, I was going over the allocation of resources, and I found this. The Ross Duffy report? Yes, sir. I read it. It says nothing. Well, uh, perhaps you read the edited version, sir, because I gotta tell you, the original is a real eye-opener. 
I mean, it fundamentally predicted the locations that are getting hit by severe weather, including Paris. Yes, I know, it's politically distasteful, but, sir, in light of everything that's going on, I really think we shouldn't consider it. Judith, that report was heavily edited after being carefully considered. And do you know why? Hmm. Because Ross Duffy is a crank. Now, I want you to rest assured that more research is being undertaken. When and if something turns up, you'll be among the first to know. I'll see to it. Yes, sir. Many are wondering if even the new FEMA is up to the challenge. A new string of supercells has exploded from Seattle to Chicago. Tornado alerts are in effect for all of South Dakota, where massive rainstorms have temporarily closed Mount Rushmore National Park. And just hours ago, what could turn out to be another record-shattering Category 6 tornado has destroyed much of the Mall of America outside Minneapolis, where most of the retailers lost it all. Lost it all. Maybe that should be the FEMA motto. Maybe we can sell t-shirts. Great, I'll sign you up for the job. Larry's dad seemed to have predicted what happened in Chicago and Paris. <laughs> Sorry, Mom, but it's kind of funny. I mean, I know you don't like him. I never said that. You don't have to. I remember the look on your face when you found out Lear and I were dating. He's painfully smart and reckless. I had a hard enough time with him in college, and nothing was at stake then. Yeah, but aren't you the one telling me that your job is more important than any of the individual people involved? Did you tell me I should get over myself? The fate of the world hangs in the balance, Director Carr. Mm-hmm. And the fact that Ross would be distracted because he'd be arguing with me and consequently not paying any attention to the boy who's spending way too much time with his daughter. Would be a complete coincidence. Mm-hmm. The idea of a secret mission appeal to you? Do I have a Japanese kitty cat tattooed on my butt? I'll take that as a yes to both. Dr. Duffy? I'm Melody Chang, assistant to the director of FEMA. Sorry, wrong address. The director wants to talk to you about your report. The original. Paris? Chicago? With predictions like that, you should be an odds maker. Cute. But I'm not wasting any more time working for the government. Then you should be interested to know that I'm not officially here. The director's working under the radar. She ought to win some points for that. She does? Who is she? Judith Carr. Get out of the rain, kid. Now that look tells me you think I just chucked a great opportunity to get heard, get funding, and stop being the weatherman in the Iron Mask. I'm sure you did the right thing. Good night, honey. Good night, Dad. Did I hear someone knocking? Yeah, some girl. Wrong address. The terrible storms across America, and now in Europe, may only be the beginning. These are frightening times, friends. But they are less so when we remember we don't have to face them alone. Reach into your heart. Reach deep and give. Out your wallets and give till it bleeds. We had an anonymous tip about an undernourished, underappreciated reporter locked in this facility. You know, technically, obit writers aren't reporters. Nicely done. Are you giving away our two hundred dollars of savings? You know what I hate? People that use God to rip off other people. People who actually believe in God. Well, maybe you'll get to do an in-depth series on them and get promoted out of the graveyard. To the reporter's credo. Comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. Mm. 
Now, you're not planning on taking advantage of me now that you're plying me with alcohol, are you? Mm -hmm. What's that? Just a scrape. Yeah, you didn't get into a scrape, did you? Nothing that wasn't worth it. I don't know what it is about you. Some people want to kill you. All I ever want to do is kiss you. Mm. <laughs> nice technique you got there. Very fluid center of gravity. Do you think you can make me something special? Like an IQ? Ouch. Not everyone can have brains and beauty. And yet we all seem to get the same top honors at the Boston Academy. Can I help it if I'm being groomed for a life of political glory? Maybe I should try actually doing something. Hmm, which brings me back to my original point. Go. Five, five, five. Oh, one, two, nine. Did you actually think I was sending that to you? Keeping me abreast of things? Just reminding me what you're missing. <laughs> Yo, Stu! I got an extra ticket and backstage pass for Rockfest. If you don't mind, I'd like to ask Lyra. Just think about it. Unbelievable. The text dollars at work. <laughs> With these historic storms striking U.S., is the administration concerned we may be facing a global weather catastrophe? Global catastrophe. These have been punishing storms, but isn't that a little chicken little? Mr. Secretary. Evan, is the president revisiting his decision not to sign the Kyoto Accord? Now, we currently have an energy policy in place that will take us cleanly through the 21st century. The president's been very clear about this. Stay the course. Focus on the future. And not be panicked by a few loop storms. Thank you very much. Don't panic a few fluke storms. Haven't you heard? FEMA's going to kiss it and make it better. The moisture content's gone up 40% since a week ago. Well, George has water on the brain. Jack in the T1 line if you're just gonna lose it. Of course it isn't a complete waste of time. Doc! It's for you! So this is what a grant from Greenpeace buys. Rents? Until September, at which point I lose my grad students. Everything's just great. I read your report, Ross. The original. You want some tea? No, thanks. So you read my report. What do you need me for? You've got new tornado alleys springing up on two continents, and your report suggested the locations two years before it happened. Get this straight. I predicted the locations. Look, I was in Paris. That storm was off the scale. I never predicted that. So you're saying it was a matter of degrees? Oh, degree? We're not supposed to get that kind of weather on this planet. And me realize that my report was just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, yes, global warming is creating new regions of extreme weather, but something else is going on. Something else is turning 
ordinary storms into the worst weather ever recorded on the planet, please. So, so why is that? Oh my god, you don't know, do you? It's a complex problem, Judith. I seem to remember you telling me one time there's no problem so complex you could not figure it out with one night's concentrated thought. There's no need to make this personal. And I'm misquoting you? Yeah, I need some air. You want some air? Let's go get some air. Ross, the fact that this is down to me and you is profoundly odd for both of us. But the truth is, I've run out of all the rascal geniuses, so I can't just let you walk away. And frankly, you owe me. Judith. Listen, right now, I have money and I have power, and I'm looking at the one guy who might be able to save a lot of people from dying. So, are you going to work with me? I'll need two teams. One in a military aircraft, the other one on the ground. This trigger, whatever it is we're looking for, doesn't give any warning, it doesn't stick around afterwards, which means we're going to have to dive right into one of these suckers if we have any hope of finding out what sets it up. The Air Force is going to take some doing. Do you have any idea who you want for the ground unit? Yeah. Two people. One of them's almost dead and the other one wants me dead. Great. Hello? Hold on. Excuse me, sir. You feel like talking? What are my other options? Tell me something good. Ross! Yo, goat! <laughs> Why, you get all sentimental thinking I was the goner? Are you kidding? I've never been more ready. All right, I'll be there. No, oh, oh, oh. Ross? Uh, I'm probably going to need a little help with the driving for a spell. Well, if you can get her, that'd be great. Adios! Little darling, you're going to need to bring me a hacksaw. What happened to you? What are you doing here? Thanks some booze. He's working for you any day. I got funding, Faith. Real funding. That instrument package that you built. Now you can fly it. Faith! You were top of your class. You recruited before you defended your masters. How do you put up with this? I put up with you. I, I was defending you while they were throwing me off campus and withdrawing job offers. This is a relief. I don't know what was wrong with me. I was so enthralled with the great man, I didn't even believe in your sacred theory. Faith, my theory missed everything that was important. These storms are so much worse than I ever predicted. Something's making it happen. Faith, I got no idea what. Wow. I never thought that I would hear you say that. Come on, give me another chance, will ya? All right. But there's something that you have to do for me first. Anything. Clean up the puke and booth floor. Listen to this. 500 year events occurring only a few days apart. What could it mean? Gee, Dad, what could it mean? Why don't they interview you? At least you don't have illusions about how it's going to work out this time. You've seen the news, Gail. How would I say no to them? Russ, don't expect too much. They need you until they need to get rid of you. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. The last vestiges of the idealistic college student find them dead. <laughs> well, it will be like going back to college, won't it? No. I'm not going back anywhere. I gotta go to work. Bye. Bye, Bye sweetheart. Hello. Oh, uh, I may be late. I have an ocean meeting tonight. Bye. Uh, well, the boy from the Panhand never looked better. Uh, I couldn't make any sense out of your brief, Professor, but, but uh... And again, you're not paying me for academic analysis. No, I'm hiring you because I need the kind of data that can only be gotten when the world's ending around whoever's getting it. It's the data we have to have. Are you sure you're ready to get back up on the horse? <laughs> Let me tell you something, Professor. When I was up in that twister, looking down at the Sears Tower, it struck me. I was a man facing his destiny, strapped in an SUV. So what did I do? What? I popped that lock and I stepped outside and I flew. You did not. And I flew. <laughs> I figured, hell, I'm already dead. Why not enjoy the ride? Ride that whirlwind. <laughs> but that's when I saw it. My destiny. 
I was flying higher than incoming traffic into O'Hare, but I suddenly knew that I wasn't going to crash. That tornado dropped me straight into Lake Michigan. Point your toes! <laughs> Point me at that. Does she drive as dirty as she looks? Uh-huh. And it's all for you, buddy. We added 1,500 pounds of ballast to keep the rubber on the road. I need to send you in there as close as possible. Well, that's hell on the paint, but a little slice of heaven every other way, huh? Damn, girl. You never looked that good in a lab coat. Now, four years ago, when Penny and I first took our vows and married not only our lives, but our purpose, we had no idea how many believers would join us. But you're here. You're here. And more and more every day. Safe. Together. We can see past the pain of the storms, the tragedy. We can see God's great love protects us now and evermore. What shall we sing, Penny? Well, seeing as it's our anniversary, I'd choose something from Elvis. <laughs> But I don't want to get you in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we see if Monty has a hymn for us? Maybe next time you should pick a smaller kid. I know. But they ate it up, didn't they? Mm. I can't get over how many new faces are. I, I just wish they didn't come to us so full of fear. Oh, but that's why they come. Maybe that's what all these storms are about. God shaking the shoulder of those who need waking up. Oh, that's what's beautiful, Pimp. You always see the hand of the Lord at work. Oh, I'm, the door was open. I, I'm sorry, Reverend Penny. It's my fault. I asked him to bring me some numbers. He feels the passion so strongly. But something makes it hard for him to find peace, doesn't it? Yeah. The passion between you and me. Yeah. Come in, Mad Dog. This is Wind Rider. We're pulling out of D.C. and heading northwest. Can you give me and the little lady a target? Feeds from National Weather Service are showing us elements of the Chicago storm. Hung up on an occluded front over Michigan. Wind Rider, what Dano's trying to say is the toad soaker that blew away Chicago is reforming. I was definitely not trying to say toad soaker. Tommy? This air mass is headed east at about 50 miles per hour. Well, we're heading northwest. We should cross paths just before Detroit. I know it doesn't look like much, but it's the only lead we got, and I want you to follow it. No problem, Professor. If there's any extreme weather within 200 miles of that front, this finely home nose will bring us right to it. Roger that. Of the thought. I think it works a little better if you actually believe what you're saying, but... Jude, you've always been a team player, and now they put you in. That's good. That's what you work for. Yeah, if only the game weren't so corrupt. Well, maybe I'm just cynical, or it's not a coincidence that I'm working at an event that you've been invited to. What, you think? My two children. <laughs> what a pleasant surprise. Did you request that Gavin be at this event? Of course I did. I wanted first-class protection, and it's a good idea that brothers and sisters lay eyes on each other occasionally. Now, just because you're a public servant, that doesn't make the rest of us your servants. Am I all that bad? Well, considering how many years you've been in Congress, you could be worse, but yeah, bad. You're pretty bad. I'm very proud of you. I've always told you that working your way... Inside the Beltway would lead to great opportunities. I know I haven't forgotten. But you have, my dear. You have committed a mortal political sin. You have assumed that reality drives policy. 
when any half-witted government official knows that it's the other way around. The Duffy Report. How many people know? Honestly, all that matters is that uh, no, uh, the Chief of Staff Horst is one of them. Don't let his look fool you. He's hard and he's nasty, particularly when it comes to his first love, the energy business. Alan? Ah, have you had the privilege of meeting my daughter? Indeed I have. Nice to see you again, Miss Carr. Nice to see you, sir. I trust you're getting the hang of things. I have an excellent staff. But... You may be the most important person in the government now, Miss Carr. The nation's hurting. They need your help. They need you to put things back the way they were. We don't expect you to get everything perfectly right first. Just as long as everything's back to normal by, say, Friday morning. <laughs> <laughs> They only have to touch you. We need a curator now. On it. Dad, you guys get out of here! Everybody clear out! Clear out of here! Everybody get out! This is car. I need a level one medical response immediately. What the hell is this? What are these numbers? This can't be right. Doc! 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 Relax, they're gonna want to come see this, come on. Somewhere near Cairo. Does anybody speak Arabic? Duka Duka. Hi, it's Judith. Hey, Judith, it's Ross. Now, I'm sorry to call you with bad news, but we got a major outbreak in a place I never predicted. Yeah, we're not in Kansas anymore. about Egypt? I've been watching the news all morning. I imagine Daniel has something to say. He'll say what he always does, that the Lord is watching over us. Benny, did you see this? Exodus 8, 4, and the frog shall come up both upon thee and upon thy servants and upon all thy people. If the storms are warning, how can this be anything but a clear sign? Plagues. Very Old Testament. What's everybody on their toes? It, it was, it was Egypt, Penny. Pharaoh's own city, it's destroyed. I wanna, I wanna do something to prove to the Lord that I'm no longer the man I was before you raised me up. The Lord has shown us his way. We, we could be his instruments. We could, we could make another sign. I believe the Lord might smile on that, Monty. But uh, it would have to be a secret. Yeah. Our secret. Here's a little human interest story. Discredited crank given second chance by novice administrator. Last night, the Great Pyramid, which basically shrugged off the last 5,000 years of everything this planet has to offer it, went down like the first little piggy's house. 
Now, this isn't about my ideals. This isn't about the truth. This is about protecting our backs. Couldn't you find another mad scientist? Look, just let us do the research. I'm not going to release anything to anybody. I am fully aware that the energy industry has hundreds of billions of dollars riding on the status quo. But you better know something if there's something to know. You know, when I put you up for this job, I didn't think you were quite this smart. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I'll let you know. Well, as long as you're in such an open-minded mood, there is another thing I have to ask you. Mm-hmm. Yo, Colonel, there's some DC folk in your office looking for you. You know my reckless youth would catch up. If that's what it is, I better start being much more reckless. These guys seem to think you're some kind of hero. Oh, thank you, thank you. But uh, you're only a hero if you do something worthwhile. Your reputation as a hurricane hunter is second to none, Colonel. Well, it's not really that hard to find something that's 200 miles across, moving at 12 miles an hour, but it does keep me out of trouble. We'll be straight with you. We need you to fly into these storms right when they're producing the most violent weather any of us have ever seen. It'll be extremely dangerous and demanding. Demanding. For someone my age. Sir, this isn't about getting data for research paper. This is about storms that are killing people because we don't understand them well enough. I understand your mission and your concern, but the only thing about me that's old and slow is the plane I fly. The C-130 is not what you need. No, if we're going to be chasing something that's going to pop up anytime, anywhere, you're going to need something fast. They're modifying an SR-71 at a base in Arizona. I already have approval. Well, in case you haven't noticed, everything between Vegas and Chicago is in shambles, and it is my job to make sure the rest of the country doesn't follow suit. No, I, for God's sake, we're talking about people here, not protecting the paint off your precious airplane. Oh, wait, hold on, I got another call. I forgot the lasagna in the freezer. Look, if you don't release your aircraft a few moments right now, the next phone call you'll be getting is from the head of Homeland Security, reassigning you to a radar station somewhere in Tierra del Fuego. Oh. Let me help with the salad. Ah, oh, what would I do without you? I'd probably starve. <sighs> I'm so sorry. No, Mom, it's okay. Go on saving the world. <sighs> yes. No, 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 that is exactly Colonel, we usually like to keep her around Mach 1 when dealing with dirty weather. Yeah, you may be right. Let's find out. Colonel, we're gonna spin. This is Cyclone 1. I'd call our test flight a success. Uh, standing by for you to point us at that storm. Roger that. Gavin, I need you to look after your sister. She's playing with some very big boys, and they have some very nasty toys. Isn't that what you trained her for? You made her believe that she had to work in the system. She could never accept that the system is totally corrupt. And how could she? Because that would mean that her father was corrupt. Look out! Close the door! Stay here. <laughs> These are frightening times, friends, but they are less so when we remember we don't have to face them alone. Join us. In God's house, you will find comfort, friendship, and strong shoulders to... See, what they're doing is they're using people's growing fear about the storm to build their ministry. It's not right. Someone should do a story about them. I'd like to go down and see if I can't get them to give us an interview. Where's the obit on that greenskeeper? Uh, it's on your desk, ma'am. Bridget, the halls are very media savvy. Barbara Walters might get an interview, not you. Well, I'd like to find a way. I mean, if there's no risk, why don't you just let me take a run at it? All you can do is win. All right. Just make sure your ways don't get in the way of your day job. Tommy, what is it? Something's brewing. Maybe you better get ready to launch. There's nothing to read. I, I don't want to waste... What are you copying? Hey, Billy, what's up? 
The GPS has you at 4287 North by 7886 West. Is that right? Dead on. Detroit next red reporting severe pockets of wind. Looks something very big is churning right over your heads. You certainly can't tell it by looking. It's still way up there. I advise you get a rocket up right now. Yeah, I'm on it. What are you doing? Helping you. I think made my neck itch. Step back. Billy, do you see what I see? Yeah, she's gorgeous and she actually works. Look, I know you're the proud mama of AR-23, but could you just spare a second to take a look at the data? Uh -oh. How long? Five minutes, Max. Faith, you got five minutes, girl. This is big. It's exactly what we need. Now try and find a safe place and launch again. We're gonna find you some cover. Okay, how did you do that? I mean, I went to college for this, all right? I had to send a rocket up in the air. You, you, what? Stand there and stick a finger in the air? We have Tommy's position. We on target in two minutes. Where I come from, they call that a tornado magnet. You better warn them. Trader Park now. Data acquisition engaged. Meeting to erratic. It's not been close enough. Let's go find the heart of this sucker.
We're out of position now. Data should be streaming. Talk to me, Dano. Talk to me. Still trying, Professor. There's there's no answer. What did I tell you? No twister's gonna kill Tornado Tommy. Sorry about that. I think I panicked. Did the danger's passed, right? <coughs> now the danger's passed. Hello? Doc! They're alive. Faith? Tell me you got the data. We just got one short burst of scramble code from the plane. I got all the data you need, Professor. With my own two eyes. I've been up close and personal to this storm before in Chicago. How could you possibly know that? It's like kissing, darling. No two do it the same way. Besides, I already got a hickey from the last one. Do you agree, Faith? A absolutely. I mean, I don't know if it was a Category 6, but when you're standing under it, it feels like the sky's falling. <laughs> Our Chicago storm maintains its path. Buffalo's next on the menu. Professor, it looks like we have another major disturbance in the Caribbean. Please tell me these storms are not going to join up. Miami says they will, and when they do, they're going to swing north. Son of you got to be kidding me, Ross. Hey, Melody, get me the southeastern satellite feed. Right, got to go. Those three storms are going to converge into one hurricane? Boss. We've got nothing in reserve. We get hit by a second weather disaster, we're gonna need a FEMA to look after FEMA. Where did I choose the wrong look to get promoted? Can't you feel it? Feel the life, the energy, the spirit that says, nothing can stop me. Nothing can stop me. Amen. <laughs> you know, friends, when I heard that the tragedy of poisonous frogs at the museum was being called a plague, I scoffed. Now, with an assault of flies, perhaps these really are the Lord's plagues. It's right here in the good book. Exodus 10, 6, and flies shall fill the houses of your officials. Another devastating storm is headed for Buffalo, New York. Extreme weather in Asia may have killed thousands. What else can the Lord be saying but come to me, hurry! Don't waste another minute! Now what pen in these? Friends, as Donnie always says, once the Lord knows we trust him, we have nothing to fear. Show him your faith. Send what you can. I have something to show you from one believing soul. You know what is in here, friends? The deed to his house. Yes! Now I'm sure I've got my home in heaven paid for. Oh, bless you. You will be saved. Oh, Donnie, lead us in a song of victory, won't you? Glory to God in the highest glory. Peace to God's people on earth. Our ratings are on a steady climb. Donations are at an all-time high. More and more people are waking to God's purpose. Well, Theo, let's talk about Theo. Oh, please. What is he? Then let's talk about the flies. So I opened a box of bugs. A few flies get loose and thousands of... If we work this right, tens of thousands of people We'll turn back to God. Are you crazy? There could be a federal investigation. You, you wake up, Donnie. You pray for an hour. You work on your sermon for another two. You shake hands at the photo ops. You think everything else around here happens by magic? Well, I deeply value what you do for... Well, then stop acting like you alone know what God is asking us to do. Well, these storms are not God's punishment. Global warming is, not, is an act of man. But we're too afraid to face up to that. It's the whole point of my church, to bring people into God's house and free them from their fears so they can face the challenges ahead. Well, that's easy for you to say. You've never been afraid in your life. But some people, that's all they understand. 
will. We have to undo the damage, Penny. We have to put ourselves on the line for our beliefs. What are you talking about? I'm going to the storm. I'm going to preach from beneath its awesome force. And we will not be afraid because we will put ourselves in the hands of the Lord. We will do this together. And he's coming too. Let me, let me tell him that the flies was my idea. No, no, everything's fine. Just, it's just Donnie and I have very different ideas of how to accomplish the Lord's work. Well, I was just like old times. You, me, cheap pizza. Yeah, thanks for the break. For a half hour, we could actually pretend things were normal. Normal? Were we ever normal? No. Normal's overrated. We have a special brand of normal. Abby normal? <laughs> yeah, that, right? that was bad. <laughs> What's this? This car, Dr. Duffy. Max Wilder from WGBC. We've heard rumors that you are utilizing FEMA funds in support of Dr. Duffy's weather research. Is that true? Yes, that's true. We have to understand what we're facing in order to prepare for it. Dr. Duffy, what proof do you have that everyone but you is wrong? They weren't wrong. It's true at the time they had legitimate criticisms that, that I was too stubborn to acknowledge. What I'm working on now takes those concerns into consideration. Now, would it be unfair to say you brought Dr. Duffy on board because of your recent divorce and because of the fact that you were college lovers? You know what, this interview's over. Ross! Florida cold! Hurricane Eduardo escalated to Category 5! Oh, uh, just one more you question. Has that the the relationship uh, been rekindled? As Florida guards itself for a Category 5 hurricane to hit land later today, all eyes are on the head of FEMA and her surprising reliance on Dr. Ross Duffy. Would it be unfair to say you brought Dr. Vera? Duffy on board because of your recent divorce and because of the fact that you were both college lovers? You know what, this interview's over. Answer the question. It's a legitimate question. Well, I guess that explains why they were so uptight when we first started going out. Didn't they think we'd ever find out? <laughs> The director of FEMA blushing on national TV. <laughs> How about you let me go bust the people that sent her on? Well, I, uh, I appreciate the impulse. I did want to see you about something you can't put your gung ho yeah. talent into. What you need me to do? To banish punctifier. Western horse fly. They don't fly here. Ferguson was basically laughing at me. He said, since I already had the frogs, why not the bugs, too? Well, if it's any consolation, my editor laughed at me when I asked if I could write a real story. So what does that mean? Are we doomed to mediocrity? I prefer to think that our best is yet to come. In that case, let's make the time pass more enjoyably. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't so bad, Ritter. I had to wear a pressure suit just to climb into this baby. They didn't pressurize the cabin for our comfort, Colonel. The equipment likes it better. Cyclone One, your data stream is hot. So is that hurricane, man. Let me improve your view. Welcome to Florida. Theme park for disaster. Say a prayer, Ritter. Oh, those folks will never get a chance to. I've covered a lot of hurricanes, and I've never seen anything like this. It's a definite Category 5. The winds have to be gusting at 150 miles per hour. If this isn't hell on earth, I don't know what is.
the superstorm that destroyed Mount Rushmore and has now traveled straight across the northern United States is heading straight for Buffalo, New York. FEMA's new director, Judith Carr, is already being criticized for the way she is handling this latest disaster. Paris, Egypt, Chicago, Hong Kong, leaving everyone everywhere thinking one thing, what's the next hug? Even though Hurricane Eduardo has moved north of Miami, the winds are still punishing. Georgia and the Carolinas are bracing for the ultimate. I'm all right. I'm okay. I, I don't care if you have to rub your feet against the carpet to get the electricity on. Just do whatever it takes and then just call me as soon as it's up. Hey, how about breakfast? No. I get enough of your job already, you know, like learning key details of your life in press conferences. Stuart, I'm, I'm sorry, that was a long time ago. But what are you doing? In case you haven't noticed, the sky is falling and Ross and I are trying to do something about it. All I know is that this is creating a lot of tension in Lear's family. And anything that makes Lear unhappy, it makes me unhappy. Stuart, you're not being fair about this. Stuart! I want you to know I got nothing to apologize for, but I'm sorry anyway. Sorry you got caught? Caught? On camera, that's all. You seem to forget that Judith and I were roommates for two years. What does that mean? We went on double dates. I can tell when she's interested. Honey, you were the one who stole her boyfriend. Well, maybe she's thinking about stealing him back. The thing is, you two just looked so damn guilty. She makes you think about it, doesn't she? The road not taken. I made my choice a long time ago, and for a million reasons, that was and is still the right choice. So why does it sound like you're trying to convince yourself? All my life, I've lived by a set of assumptions. That there are boundaries, limits, physical laws. There's no such thing as an F6 tornado or a Category 6 storm. And... I'm just not certain about anything right now. If you could be wrong about that, what else could you be wrong about? This had better be good, Billy. It is, as long as bad is the new good. Ah, uh, Tommy's nose is twitching just outside of Buffalo. I gotta go. Trevor Hall. It really is an honor to have you here. Well, thank you. Mrs. Hall? Welcome to Buffalo. We're completely sold out tonight. I think people are really scared. But we're here to help take away that fear, aren't we? <laughs> Is your crew ready to do a sound check? They are good, aren't they? Oh, they won't disappoint you, Reverend Hall. Well, it's not about me. Uh, a lot of other people need to get the message. <laughs> Damn! Both bridges are out! We're never gonna make it. They're more afraid of getting run down by that than me. Yeah, rightly so. If she stays on the water, we can nail her from the dock. Colonel Davis, our target just took out two bridges near Buffalo. Where are you? Iowa. What the hell are you doing there? We need the data. I had to run to the service station, but we're on our way. Look, you wanted to make a point to me, you've made it. Let's call this off now. Don't even do the sound check. It is frightening, isn't it? Which is exactly why we're here. Oh, Donnie! Now, I believe in the Lord, Anna. And I also believe he takes care of those who takes care of themselves. Now, this is a brand new ballpark. It has four different lightning arresters and its own weather station. And if the wind gusts over 60, well, we'll just call it off. Now, Penny, you got to ask God for direction. I did. And the voice that answered said, show them there's nothing to fear but fear itself. <laughs> 
And yet our membership soared after I said that the flies were God's plague. We are never going to talk about those plagues again. Daddy, God gave us all this wealth so we couldn't work for him. Better tighten that harness. We might have to dead a pod. Roger. This is Cyclone 1. You're good to go, Cyclone 1. Ritter is transmitting now. Colonel, how long can you keep feeding us this? As long as you need it, Doc. What the hell is that? Nothing I've ever seen. Which makes it what I think we've been looking for. You want to run from here or further out? All the way out! We've come this far. Extreme low pressure, very cold, bone dry. Look at the gas mixture. Are we staring at the trigger? Here she comes! All right, we'll look from here. Found a severe wind shear. Wind shear? This bad? Losing the data stream. Katie, you and Patrick, get me an update. <laughs> Billy, where the hell is Tommy and Faith? <laughs> They're right smack in the middle of it. Well, let's hope they can give us what we need. You take this stuff seriously, don't you? That's a rare thing. I like that. storm of wind and they came unto him and said master master we perish but then he arose and said unto them where is your faith and they stared into his steady eyes and they are they are trying to see and they're calm he said this is exactly the message that we want to deliver the great storms that test our cities and our faith. Who will stand with me now? darkest hour, I stand before you to honor the memory of Donnie, a man whose calling was more important than his life, a man whose life was its own message. God will take you to his bosom, no matter how late in the game. I believe the Lord took Donnie so suddenly as a sign that if we take the Lord into our hearts, he will raise us into heaven. Friends, we must now accept that we could indeed be facing the end of days. Let us all make ourselves as ready as Donnie was for the Lord's summons. The storms, the disasters, the plagues of frogs, of flies. What other warnings must the Lord deliver unto us? Let us no longer hold in stock what we cannot take to heaven. Let us use what we have, give what we have, to spread the message to our brothers and sisters everywhere. 
please. Let us pray. I heard the Lord speak to me today in strength and in the grace. Thank you, Monty. You understand. And I think they do, but oh, so many of them, so many remain deaf to the Lord's will. Like Pharaoh? Yes, like Pharaoh. What did it take to bring him around? Death of the firstborns. That's what religion's turned into. Some guy on the street just gave me this. The news isn't any better. Do I hear your crusade again? I got the Penny Hall interview. I thought her husband just kicked the bucket. Which was my ticket in. You should have read the glowing obit my paper ran. It was so beautiful, Penny Hall called me herself. I had no idea you were so devious. And you call yourself a cop. <laughs> anyway, I tried to get her to delay it, but she insists on it. She's in mourning, but she can't shut up. Looking the death of her husband? Yeah, well, she's on the air turning your frog and fly investigations into plagues. Why not milk poor dead Donnie while she's at it? When I look at that woman, I see something very wrong. Yeah, well, I look at this woman and I see something very right. Yeah, I'm sweaty. I'll get you later. It's very sad when you realize how many lives have been lost and still not knowing where many of them are, in most cases even who they are. Officials say it will be some time before they can put all of the pieces to this tragic puzzle together. Maria? From here, it's almost impossible to imagine the power of a storm that has ripped multi-story buildings. These are solid concrete buildings from their foundations. These are structures... How bad is it in Buffalo? Yeah, this structure's trash and casualties are high. I've committed to every last resource I've got left. Which is what we need to talk about. You've read the latest weather service assessment? Yep, 60% chance of Hurricane Eduardo hitting the D.C. metro area. Thanks, it's good to go. You know the policy, we need to protect the political and military infrastructure. Yes, I know. I plan on doing some juggling. It's not about juggling. It's about taking away from one to take care of the other. Jim. I've got real people really hurting out there. DC is hypothetical. DC is also a low-lying city on a tidal river with a hurricane coming. It is THE priority. Now, it is imperative that you and your people make sure the government stays online. This is not a request, Judith. What else, Jim? Congress has just gone into emergency recess. We're offering to evacuate families of all essential personnel who are staying behind. Your name is on that list. Judith, it is critical that you can perform your function without personal distractions or any more personal distractions. I know I wouldn't want my family here. You don't have a family, Jim. Yeah, well. Duffy's family goes on that list. I can't just add fa His expertise is key to understanding what's happening and saving lives. To me, he's the single most important person in the city right now. Okay. Done. Done. I've been staring, Billy. Staring, and I can't see it. Cut yourself some slack. Doc, the right stuff only gave us 15 seconds of data, and Tommy and Faith didn't even launch. You know, I ought to be able to see it, even without a complete data set. The trigger. Damn straight. There's got to be some correlation in the data, in the pieces, some... a clue. We're working on it. We'll find it. Are we in a bad mood? No. Good. Because, um, I'm about to ruin your day. <sighs> Jim wants us to evacuate our families until the threat of the hurricane passes. Now, last week I was persona non grata, now I'm essential personnel. <laughs> Shimmy wouldn't be here if you didn't think it was the right thing to do. 
Well, I think under the circumstances, we don't have any choice. Yeah. Evacuated? To where? Greenbrier Hotel. It's a military facility in West Virginia. It's not for me. Well, this isn't optional, Stuart. This could be very dangerous. I need you safe. Maybe I should make the decision for myself. Not this time, kiddo. Fine. I'll go pack. Oh, come on. Look on the bright side. Lyra, you'll be going with Stuart. And you'll be staying with Judith. Thanks for meeting me. I just need to get out of the house. Don't worry about it. What? No, no, no. Don't look at the camera. Lyra wanted a happy moment. Oh, he looked at the camera, Lyra. Screw off, Peter. Come on, car. Why don't you hop back in your limo and find someone who gives it? If you really loved her, you wanted to upgrade. Breaking up. He's a little upset. And why don't you two head off in separate directions, huh? See you on the bus, killer. I can't believe that idiot's coming, too. Look, maybe we should elope. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, would you get that? Hey, put that back on. I think it's hot enough. Put the kettle back on. Composed of two elements, and one of them is us. Us? What does that mean? Our power plants, our cities, their heat islands. They generate thermal columns that shoot all the way up through the atmosphere. Heat islands? But Ross, our cities and factories have been pumping out heat for years, hundreds of years. Exactly, that's why I discounted it. Can I turn this? I mean, no, forget that. But what if that column of heat mm. was powered by all of our air conditioners, our cars stuck in traffic, not to mention the five-year record-breaking heat wave that we've been having? Now, what if all that heat rose up and it hit something? Something really cold. Ever hear of the mesosphere? Yes, it's the highest part of the atmosphere. Right. It's above where planes fly, where the clouds live. It's cold up there. It's really cold. It's like minus 150 degrees. And it's not supposed to come into contact with where we live. But I think our greenhouse gases have pumped enough energy into the mesosphere to destabilize it past the tipping point. What happens if it tips? It falls. Now, I think chunks of mesosphere falling all the time, they largely go unnoticed, unless they collide with a thermal column. And when that happens, you can get an enormous thermal differential, instant tornado alley. Now, when you add genuine bad weather, that whole thing ratchets up two or three orders of magnitude. Can you prove this? A Chicago storm's moving northeast. One of these thermal columns is going to hit a falling chunk of mesosphere, and when it does, we're going to be there recorded. If you're going to guess, where would you say it's going to hit next? I bet everything on New York. There are 20 million stories in the naked city, but our story makes the rest irrelevant. The sky really is falling. As Washington prepares for the arrival of Hurricane Eduardo, first responders have been put on high alert. Moments ago, a White House spokesman assured us that all precautions are being taken to assure that government services... Well, oh, look, best friend Pete. Guess he's going, too. Yeah, I'm thrilled. Now listen, it's only for a few days, right? When you get back, the storms are over. You and me are going to spend a lot of time together, whether you like it or not. You be good. Take care of yourself, okay? All right? Bye. Bye. Don't worry, Dad. We'll be fine. 
say hi to your storm for me. You take care. Okay. Bye. Bye. Keep your head down. Yeah, Dad. <sighs> well, I thought you might like to catch up. You always say you can't be a decent engineer if you don't stay on top of the latest developments. You're gonna have plenty of time. I don't know, Ross. Maybe it's good. Give us a chance to think about what we really want. Gail. Goodbye. Bye. I cannot thank you enough for what you wrote. I have so many photographs of Donnie, but I think you captured him as none of them do. Thank you, I... I guessed you were a believer. Have you watched the show often? Uh, to be honest, no. All the better. It's people like you I want to reach. Maybe you can help me do that. Let's talk. We have 37,000 National Guard soldiers and airmen positioned to assist and respond. Tornado alerts are in effect for all five boroughs of New York City. Disaster Dave, get that link to the New York City Emergency Command Center up again. See how much longer the National Guard's going to be. they got to get there before the storm hits tonight. Joey, we'll report on this in 20 minutes. Billy, we've got that link to New York. Yeah, it's up. Good. Faith. Tommy, Colonel Davis, remember when things start popping, you have to rely on your own judgment. Don't you worry, Professor. This time we're going to get you a complete data set all the way up to 15,000 feet. Colonel Davis, I know I'm asking you to fly to the edge of your aircraft safety envelope. I haven't done before. All right, remember, I need proof from the ground and the air, an unimpeachable cross-section of the trigger. Thermal column rising, slab of mesosphere falling. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to nail this sucker to our trophy wall. Roger that. This is huge. 
the storm that was supposed to miss New York is not only hitting the city full force, but now we're getting reports that a massive storm surge is hurling its way at the city. Stress is pinning, sir. I'm aware of that, man. Well, we should do something about it. I'll keep the bird in one piece. You keep the data moving. The transmitter power is low. Boosted. Canalize the navigation system. Right now, in the middle of this? What's going on, Colonel? What's up? Port side generators down. Full stabilization computers are offline. Data pod. Trying to reboot it, but the memory's wiped. Uh, Dr. Ross, uh, we've lost most of our electronics, including data acquisition. Colonel, any chance of Jerry ringing in? We're a dead stick right now, Doc. We got 3,500 feet. We got 6,000 feet. I hope you got that. Tell me we got it. We got it. We got it. You need to see this. Yeah. Judith. Ross. Yeah. We got perfect data from the rocket. I don't know about Davis yet, but... Ross Florida just called. Our storm pack model just put out an alert. They think our northern storm is going to bend south. I think it's going to collide with Hurricane Eduardo. Ross? Ross, how bad is that? Jude, if those two storms hit over DC and DC's thermal column interacts with the mesosphere, we're not talking Category 6. This is going to be a Category 7.
When unprecedented storms struck St. Louis and Las Vegas in the last two weeks, it was called a flu. When the first reported Category 6 storm destroyed Chicago, it was called a 500-year storm. But those reassurances have faltered in recent days as one 500-year storm after another has struck Paris, Egypt, Buffalo. With yesterday's devastation here in New York City, there is no question that the sun is rising on a very changed world. Global disaster relief has been stretched to its limit. Local resources are tapped and power grids are strained to the breaking point. Increasingly, people around the world are simply falling to their knees and praying for deliverance. Of course, the question now on everyone's lips is, if these storms do not end, is this the end? And nowhere is that question more urgent than in our nation's capital. Overnight, Hurricane Eduardo accelerated towards Washington, D.C. The storm in New York is headed in the same direction. Of course, we're still awaiting a definitive prediction from the National Weather Service. But if these two monster storms meet in Washington, God help us. Please remind them that Florida assures me we will have a hurricane spinning on top of the Capitol Dome sometime after lunch. So if they can give me a forecast of New York storm just a little bit before then, I would really appreciate it. Okay, please tell me you have an answer. No. The evac scenario assumes a nuclear attack, so the basic plan is... Garbage. Yeah. The uh, geological survey says we can't send anyone south or east. They either go right into the hurricane or into one of these huge zones that are going to flood. The only high ground is north and west. Leads them right into the path of the New York storm. Melody, line three. Melody Chang, Storm Prediction Center and Weather Service together. Yes. Yes. Well, when will you know? Listen, I'm your first call. All right, so they don't know if the New York storm is going to hit D.C., which isn't good news, but at least it's not bad. What we do know is that we absolutely have an extremely violent hurricane bearing down on us, so obviously we can't let up. Don't you just love New York? Lady Liberty tried to mace you with her torch. Staring death in the face. I mean, didn't that just get your ticker going? My ticker works just fine without mainlining adrenaline. Well, at least we got the professor is dead. And now, it's time for... Tommy Tornado's Wild World of Weather! And this is an improvement, how? Oh, you're not gonna get hurt. When Tommy tangles with a tornado, it's like a, a, a dance, a, a waltz. I mean, you could call it intimate. The best part of all, you get to relive all the sex parts. Over and over! Has anyone ever told you that you're mentally unbalanced? Yeah, every other day, and twice on Sunday. Which is kind of hard to believe, seeing as how I'm still standing strong! I'm still here! Although no official evacuation has been ordered, D.C. highways are jamming up as people try to flee Hurricane Eduardo. Word is, we're sitting tight. Now, some of the facilities we protect are going to be used as shelters, so you'll have your work cut out. Quinlan, you'll coordinate assignments. Get the hell out there, because another few hours is going to be too windy to walk. Car, I'm uh, detaching you to assist Secret Service. They need some help. Apparently, they were moving the families of some of the VIPs out of town, and one of the buses disappeared. My nephew was being evacuated. Secret Service asked for manpower. Thought you'd want to go. Thank you, sir. Let's go! Move! Move! All of you now! Keep moving! Go! Get over there! Move! Move! Move your feet! Move it! Let's go! Go! Let's go! Don't you move a muscle! Let's go! Let's go! Eleven children taken. The only the eldest in each family. Who's claiming responsibility? No one. There was no note. Nothing. We're keeping a lid on a debriefing victims at the scene. And Judith Carr's son was one of those taken. 
B.C. is on the verge of being hit by a hurricane. That's a federal emergency that needs to be managed without distractions. So we are not going to tell her, Jim. If she asks, tell her for security reasons. Greenbrier has a cell scrap. Her son was kidnapped. We're going to let her do her job, unimpaired. When there's something to know one way or the other, she'll be brought up to speed. Objection noted. You have your orders. start pacing in your cage? The first rule of any emergency, Peter. Assess your resources. Did your mama teach you that? I guess she did. You know, I'm glad you're ready to be an Eagle Scout steward. I really am. But this isn't about you. Nobody kidnaps the son of FEMA's director. They go after the important targets. So since this is about me, I decide what we're doing. What exactly are you doing? I'm working. being urged to get indoors and stay away from windows. The leading edge of Hurricane Eduardo is expected to hit within the hour. Francis, hang up. Go away. I'm only staying because you can bet come next election that every last one of my constituents will know that I stuck it out. And the fact that both your children are hanging tough has nothing to do with it. Go. Go where you can do some good. And if I've miscalculated and accidentally sacrificed my life for my country... I'll see to it. The obit's on the front page. Thank you, my dear. Good luck, sir. I just got off the phone with every weather agency in this country, and they all agree the two storms will definitely not collide. They're wrong. I just finished analyzing Tommy and Face and your data. Not only will that New York storm collide with a hurricane, it's going to happen right over the top of D.C. How can everyone be wrong but you, Ross? Well, they'd be right if it was the same kind of storm they've been studying for the last 50 years, but it's not. Judith, you've got to give the order to evacuate. I can't do that at this stage of the game. We'll have to hunker down in the city. Judith, there is not going to be a city. Not only is this the most vicious storm I've ever seen, it's going to collide with a Category 5 hurricane. It's all going to pile up on top of DC's massive thermal plume. All that power is going to feed directly into tornadoes. This isn't going to be Category 6. This is Category 7. And you're not giving me any options, Ross. I need options. Jude, DC's going to look like it was hit with a nuclear weapon. Personally, I think he's underestimating. Hi, my dear, don't cry. The Lord will provide. And I stay here with you. I'd very much like to. If we all stay, we will take care of our neighbors at home. Hurricane Eduardo hit the coast of Florida with near apocalyptic force and has continued beyond anything ever seen. And many forecasters are comparing the storm's force to that of a new word on the storm. It's the end of the world. My dear, time for you to be with your loved ones. Monty, I haven't seen Stephen and Paul for the longest time. Are they someplace safe? They're gone. Well, time for you to go, too. This is my home. You're so faithful. But uh, there's a risk of flooding here. I'm not frightened, Penny. No, I know, I know, but the church... Really isn't I'm safe. really not frightened, Penny. One way or the other, the Lord is coming to take us. Ruby, what are you talking about? The end of days, like you said. I didn't say that. Yes, you did. You said so many still remain deaf to the Lord's Monty. will. And that it took God's final plague to turn Pharaoh back. Monty, whatever I said, whatever you heard, this is not the end of days. Penny. myself up.
systems are back online. I swear they put this thing together with chewing gum and bailing wire, but I guess it works. You're talking like a pilot now, Ritter. Is the data sled good to go? Yes, five by five, sir. Man, dog, this is Cyclone One. We're back in the saddle and they have a new toy I think you're gonna like. I got it, okay. Doc! Doc, the right stuff's got a new idea. It's a data sled. You guys can check this out. I'll show you what I mean. Basically, it's a little sled they tow behind the jet on five miles of composite fiber cable. Okay, so here's your storm. What they'll do is they'll crank the Blackbird up to, say, Mach 2.5, and then we'll pull a real quick high-speed turn. The sled keeps going straight. It's like cracking a whip. So they can send this baby where no man can boldly go, right into the heart of the storm. It's great. Let's hope it works. I gotta go. Hey, listen, I've been trying to call Gail in her cell. I can't get through. Have you heard from Stuart? No. Jim said there's a cell scrambler at Greenbrier. It's part of security, but I'll make sure that Gail and there have access to a landline. That'd be good. That's probably a good idea we send him away. Yeah. That's it. Do you recall anything unusual with kidnappers' voices? Accents, impediments? Anyone using the name? No. I already, I already told the other agent all of this. I know, Mrs. Duffy, and I apologize, but people remember in pieces. It's crucial we revisit everything. You're certain you don't recall the kidnapper's face before he put on the mask? I, I need to call my husband. But right now, every minute is crucial to our investigation, to the safe retrieval of your daughter. This is a lockdown. No one on the outside knows about this yet. Now, it says here you're supervising engineer with GSA. Have you had any unusual interactions with anyone in the last month? Maybe you can come back in a few. Thank you. Three minutes. Right. I'm here. The next door, too. Were you the dimension when you last saw them? Stuart put up a fight. And they hit him. Did you just know? Bridget, where are you? Gavin, can you hear me? There's something weird going on here. Bridget? No, I can hear you. Get over to my office. They have a shelter there that'll stand up to the storm. My nephew's been kidnapped, along with ten other kids. What? Terrible. Look, I gotta go. Call me the minute you get to my office. Gavin, you be careful too. a cloud of ragweed or the nose i think we've got twister brewing okay tommy hang on billy check the satellite for any thermal features around hershey pennsylvania here we got data coming in got some good news for change tommy you got a hot spot yeah. tommy you seen any twisters there why you got some thermal twister bait only that big fat column of steam coming off that nuclear power plant Billy, start dialing and don't stop until you get through. I'm on it. Good thinking. But maybe we should pay him a visit. You know, just in case. Tommy's on his way. I'm trying to get that plant shut down now, but I'm hoping you can get a taste of what the trigger does before we cut that thermal plume. You're in Pennsylvania in about one minute, Doctor. Roger that. This dice is pulling out this way. We're gonna get the proof we need. This data pod better work. Roger that. Sled fully deployed. Cyclone one's gonna make contact with the plume in 30 seconds. Oh, that's now. Fifteen seconds to release point, Colonel. Start the rope! You know, a slower approach might inspire trust. Do you have any idea how long it takes to shut down a nuclear power plant? You do have a point. Look at that 
Jones, I got a less than ideal approach here. Colonel, how long will it take to line up another pass? Well, turning this train around will take me to Virginia, maybe three minutes. It's too long. We go now, ugly or not. Roger that. Seconds. Four. Three. Two. One. Mark. Ross, run the plant now and then shut it down. Cyclone one, you've made contact. You've lost the data stream. I think just need to slow. Gotta rip us apart. Yeah, anything else to get hold of. This is Cyclone 1. Lost the data sled. No! It's 15 kilobytes of data and flat line. But, Doctor, from what I saw, if this hits DC, we're gonna need to find a new capital. Any consolation, Doctor. I'm sure I saw the trigger this time. Tell me. Well, the thing was miles across and coming down from on high. We didn't have the data sled. There is no other data sled. But it doesn't matter. Your storm is like an explosion wrapped up in a minefield. So what do we do? You can't fly into that thing? Well, can't is a strong word. That's why we still have pilots instead of computer guidance systems. Colonel, I appreciate your death before dishonor attitude, but I'm not in the business of dispatching kamikazes. Sorry, I couldn't get the data. Roger that. Give me a vector back to the barn. This is probably because you banged my head on the canopy too many times, Colonel, but, uh, I'm going to miss storm chasing with you. We are done, aren't we? It's been a pleasure flying with you too, Ritter. Billy, can you sync the thermal loop with the radar loop? Sure. Oh, sorry, man. I think I did it wrong. No, 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 you didn't. This is exactly what happened in the order it happened. Put it on a disc. The squadron is going to be here in an hour. National Guard will be doing street school. Activate all the shots. Get some on tactical alert. We need all the ice you can send. The good news is people are going to the shelters instead of trying to get out of town. The bad news is the shelters are running out of room. You gotta see this. It's a combination of thermal and storm imagery. All right, look. The thermal plume fades here, and then the storm fades. You can turn the trigger on, and you can turn it off, too. Take the kettle off the heat. Nothing needs to explode. By shutting down a thermal plume. Right. Here, in D.C. Mm -hmm. Turn off the power. Everything, cars, electricity. But we're still gonna get hit, but without heat rising to meet a falling chunk of mesosphere, it's not gonna be the end of the world. Judith, we can do something to blunt the storm. I, I know this looks crystal clear to you, Ross. To everyone I have to convince, it's going to seem like a coincidence. It's not! Can you prove that? Because I've gotta have proof. Shutting down the power in the city while the monster hurricane is bearing down on us is going to cause its own disasters. I need ironclad proof. None of your mumbo jumbo data charts stuff, something a politician would understand. Judith! To recap, this video was anonymously delivered to our studios only 10 minutes ago. There was no note beyond what was on the tape itself. And it came to pass that at midnight, the Lord smoked the firstborn. Why the hell didn't you tell me? Those thrillers are just too beautiful I know, I know, I know, Judith. It's unforgivable. You don't know! Well, what happened? Where are they? The Secret Service is still working the crime scene. Who's got them? We don't know. The tape I assume you just saw is the first communication we've received. What else do you know? Ross? Gail. I believe your children are in the city. 
The ambulances that took them still have their GPSs activated. So they can track them? No one knew to. All we know is that they never left the district. Ross, there is no chance you're wrong about these storms. We ran those numbers three times. They are going to hit. I need you to stay on the job, both of you. He's right. You need to stay. <laughs> they lied to us. We owe them nothing. We owe it to Stuart and to Lyra and to the rest of those kids. We're going to get them back, but they have to live through this Category 7 storm first. And if there's any two people in this city who could do something about it, it's you two. What have you done? It wasn't my idea. He misunderstood. He who? Where are the children? Monty. He... I don't know. Where would Monty hide them? Is there a place here? No. No, that... I saw the tape. There's nothing like that here. Can I have everyone's attention just for a moment? I, I believe Dr. Duffy's research is correct in, in saying that the two storms will collide over D.C. in just a few hours. And, and it will be catastrophic. So I'm not asking you to stay. I mean, there's no guarantee we'll be able to save ourselves, let alone anyone else. But there's a possibility, so I'm going to try. For those of you who choose to stay, I'm grateful. For those of you who decide to go, I understand. I just urge you to go quickly. Get your families and get them to shelter. Sweetheart, you stay here. It's the safest place for you to be. No, um, I'm going to take my chances. Okay. Ross, if you're going to turn off the power, I need irrefutable proof. You got it. Right, you have to go. It's stupid. I'm gonna find them, and I'm gonna bring them back. Okay. Okay. You just make sure I've got a scene to bring them back to. Harsh. Let me pray with you. It is the end, isn't it? Yes, Monty. The end. I'm glad that we're facing it together. Do you think there's love in in heaven? I mean, do you think that you're rewarded for the things you denied yourself on earth? Maybe some are, Monty. Not you. You've done a terrible thing. And what's worse is you've done it in the name of the Lord. He spoke to me. He spoke through you. No, Monty! You heard what you wanted to hear. Now you listen to me. You have committed a grave sin and you will be punished. Because you were right about one thing, Monty. It is the end of days. And you're guilty of anger, of envy, of lust. Your only hope is to repent. You tell me where the children are, and then, and only then, will I help you out of this hell you've made for yourself. And the worst thing about your hell, Monty? I won't be there with you. Guilty of lust. And you won't be with me. You are temptation. until we hear from you. Things don't go according to plan. There's no guarantee we'll get paid in full. Plan's already changed. Seem was the last four stupid enough to try and weather up this storm. Yeah, but if we make it through this, I'm sure we can convince Monty to pay up. Yeah, right. We do the job just like he wants. 
We've got them outnumbered. So what? We're gonna overpower them? Why not? There's 11 of us. Assuming you can get it up to join the fight. No. No, wait. I've got a better idea. The stress is gonna be just too much for you. You sure you're not talking about yourself? Maybe it's asthma, maybe you've got a heart condition. I'm gonna be keeping body and soul together. And that's what the guards are gonna see when they come in through the door. And when they do, we jump. That is ridiculous. So is dying. Who's with me? That's democracy. Then I'll be the decoy. No, I don't think so. What's the point? Why Lyra? The point is they're gonna see a pretty girl lying on the floor. They won't think she's a threat. You and I know different. What do you need to do, boss? I need you to go and work with Billy. Make an info package. I include Ross's theory, but put it in simple terms and get it to my dad. E even if we get the power off, he's got a backup generator that's best in DC. He'll be able to do something about it. I'm on it. Okay. We have some information that needs to get out. Get out? In case DC doesn't survive the storm. Tomorrow morning, every city in the globe is going to know what happened here. I need you to help get the word out to, to every state capital, every urban area with a population over a million. We don't know how to stop these storms, but we do know how to make them less severe. You need to get the word out. Mary Beth. <laughs> so glad you came down. Someone wouldn't miss it for the world. Hey, Captain Bob. <laughs> how you doing? Good. So what did you do to convince him to let you back into the hot rods? Oh, well, sometimes experience trumps youth. Weather research. Hey, did someone ever tell you that flying is the best thing a man can do? You did. I did? Well, Captain Bob, I was wrong. This thing I ever did was be a grandfather to you. And things like that. New York Storm. Yeah. Dad, where's your back seater? Ritter's not going on this mission. There are a million lives at stake. I have to go. Come here. Oh. Well, I'm glad we got to see you. Got to have as glad as I am. Airman, you want to get a soda pop? Move it right along. We'll follow you. <laughs> Bridget, where are you? Gavin, help me. I'm at the church. They've kidnapped some kids. I don't know where they are. Big yard is always something big. You humble? Well, not me. In general. Oh, get shut of that. Let's go. 
killed by the three little pigs. Oh, she said that. Got my approach lined up. Coming in hot and true. Colonel, I don't know how... Directive car with your exception. Some of the best moments of my life have been up here. And I fully expect today to be another one. <laughs> Just say thank you. Thanks for giving us the data to prove this. Yeah, anytime, anytime. Doctor, I'm 15 seconds from penetrating the stern wall. Any idea how thick it is? No more than a thousand meters. Lighting up the data channel. Ross. Delta just gave us the wind speed of over 400 miles per hour. How can he fly now? He can't. I'm in the wall. Doctor, oh boy. Oh boy, do we have contact? Let me know when you got it. Anytime. Time. He got it! Cyclone 1 is in the data mother load. Thank you, Colonel. Thank you. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Colonel Davis didn't die for nothing. We got it. It's on the disc. Davis got it. Puzzle's complete. And turning off DC's heat is the key. It'll keep the storm from going off the scale. Like a switch. We turned it on, we can turn it off. It's fun about noses all the time. All right, you and I are going to have to convince Forrest. How long is it going to take you to turn this data into something even he can't ignore? Hours. No, we don't have hours, Ross. This is not high school science. All right, how many hours? Three. No more. All right, get it done. In the meantime, we'll, we'll try to buffalo horse into accepting the truth. But there's still time to make a difference. Okay. Get this raw data to Senator Carr. And Dan, for the next 20 minutes, maybe the most important person in the world. They don't believe it. They deserve to have their city erased. It's too bad we're living in it. door was a temptation, wasn't it? The surveillance plane just brought in new data. I can tell you conclusively the two storms will hit over D.C. Can't say I'm happy to hear that, but since we cannot evacuate, then... The data conclusively demonstrates that a combined storm will be far worse than anything we've ever seen. It will obliterate D.C. According to you. No, sir. We have the data. And as soon as the National Weather Service and NOAA see it, they're going to be saying the same thing. Judith, are you saying we have to attempt an evacuation anyway? No. Th that'll only increase the casualties. We're looking at one option here. And the sooner we do it, the better. We have to cut off the power to the city. That's outrageous. There are hospitals, law enforcement, critical government infrastructure. The panic alone would cause... The kind of destruction you're seeing from these storms only happens when a column of rising heat intersects with them. That's what destroyed Chicago, Paris, Vegas, Giza, New York. And it's what is going to happen here. Yes, unless we cut off the power now. I'll take this under advisement. There is no time for advisement. We are looking at two immediate scenarios here. Shut off the power. Kill the thermal plume. 
Give this city a fighting chance. I cannot order something this reckless just because you're convinced by your old boyfriend. No one will vet Ross's logic and then... The data's still being processed. Since when does Duffy's gut count as conclusive proof? Damn it, the data is here in my hands, and if you were smart enough, you'd know it in a second. Now, I am certain that... I don't know what you're certain of. And I am certain of one thing. This day will pass. Tomorrow the dawn will break on some scene of devastation, at which point the only question of import will be, did we act and make it worse? As left as it is, the weather is no one's fault. You know, if you turn off the power and do save DC, there are going to be a lot of questions as to why we ought to keep pumping all that crap into the air from an industry that you hold dear to your heart and wallet. As Secretary of Homeland Security, I'm ordering the power shut off. My greatest weakness is that I harbor illusions about people's loyalty. I have the President's approval. You're fired. Okay, everyone, listen up. Everyone, you've all done a hell of a job. It's not safe to stay here anymore. So please, take my thanks and go take care of yourselves. Please, get to the shelters. from the ground up. I soldered those terminals. I routed those cables. I upgraded that motherboard. It needs me. You don't get out much, do you? You call me a geek? Both of you, out. No, and I'll tell you what else. When this is over, if we're not over, what do you say you and we go, we find Horse House and we egg it? Billy, I want egg Horse House. All right, all right. Let's lose the male bonding and get back to saving the world. How long are we going to wait for Monty? Tell you what. If you don't like the odds, you can take off. We'll all split your share. Just saying. We don't know how long this place is gonna hold up. He's got a point. We need a plan in case Monty doesn't show. The plan is not to start getting stupid just because the wind is blowing. If there's any place we're safe from this storm, it's in this building. I don't understand why we can't just... Wait! Is that your theory? Huh? Hide in the corner till it's all over? All right, everybody, use these. Show them what you're made of, huh? Go find out why the hell those kids are making so much noise. And if they're trying to get smart, make sure they don't want to do it a second time. And your excuse for still being here is? Someone has to pretend like we're all still here. Horse volunteer you for that? You'll be nice and safe in the White House bunker. He told me the bunker wasn't necessary. He told me to set up a video conference. You know, wave the flag. Well, congratulations. You're about to be the first press secretary to meet his maker live on TV. He'll make an excellent martyr for the cause. I got a few press in there right now. You got anything you want to say? Are you trying to lose your job, too? Absolutely. Get back! Don't even think about it! 
gonna make it. If money isn't coming with the cash, I'm gonna serious, serious problem. Send out a car. Simplify. DC goes, this could make all the difference in the world. I think that's the literal truth, sir. We're seeing these very same weather patterns all across the Northern Hemisphere. Here's the data. Then my first call will be to the head of the European Union. Go home to your family, son. Thanks. Thank you, sir. And now we bring you this special report from the White House. A little over half an hour ago, the director of FEMA informed the White House of crucial information that will greatly reduce the damage to the city. Jim? Thank you, Evan. Good afternoon. I am no longer speaking to you as Secretary of Homeland Security. I have been relieved of my duties because I kept people's interests above personal interests. And as... Since I no longer have the authority to shut off the power grid, I implore you, ladies and gentlemen, to in effect do it for yourselves. Your best chance of survival is in your hands. Bravo. How noble. Marty, did that go out? Some people like to keep their jobs. Apparently. Church, but you don't believe. Even with that outside, you still don't believe the Lord's coming to test your soul. No, no, I don't. But I do understand. Monty, I understand this is your test. Why else would you take those children? The firstborn? You know what I don't understand? What did you do that was so bad? Why do you have to work so hard for forgiveness? You have no right to talk about her! But I have to, Monty, I must. Because she's the reason why you're here. So she's why I'm here. Why those children are wherever they are. I can tell you where they are. I understand. Penny was a temptation. She's a beautiful woman. She was no harlot. People can be good and bad at the same time, Monty. Like you. Like me. And we can be forgiven if we... This isn't about begging forgiveness. This is about the last judgment. The God has already made up his mind. There was a medieval count who captured a city. So how, how could he tell who were the heretics and who were the believers? He couldn't. So he killed them all. Because God will know his own! You don't have to go to hell, Monty. <laughs> I'm in hell. I want to get out. I'm aiming at you. You're not aiming at me. I know who wins this one. No. You don't. God does. I put down that gun before I send the senator her judgment ahead of me. Put it down! Okay! Okay. Okay, get away. Just... Just don't... Shut up. 
You're right, Monty. You're right. God will know his own. No. What are you doing? I want you to send me first. Bridget. I don't have anything to be afraid of. You're trying to make me commit a sin. You already murdered Penny. What is another matter? I didn't mean to hurt her. I want to go first. Because the Lord will judge my soul, and when he does, I will bear witness to what you've done. You can steal it all, Monty. Tell me where the children are. Be that faithful unto death. And I will give thee the crown of life. Deep. Deep part reason for water treatment facility. Bridget, we have to go. We better get to shelter. If that's the first reasonable thing you've said in the last 600 miles, let's go. I'm talking about you, not me. That's it. This is what I've been looking for my whole life. You won't have a life if you don't crawl into a hole with me right now. I gotta do what I gotta do. You know, Faith, I've always been a solo act. That right shot going you any time. I'll let you know what it's like from the front row. Secretary, I'm Jim. Just my luck, I'm not dead. So that's her way out. Great. One step forward and two steps back. Welcome to DC. I think we got about an hour in the eye of the hurricane. Till all hell breaks loose. 
the storms collide, it's going to be Category 7. Full fury unleashed. Can you please stop talking like the Discovery Channel? Duffy. Ross, I can't reach Jim or Horse. There's a report that the whole White House is gone. Are you saying that even if I finish getting this presentation together... There may be no command structure to receive it. There's no one driving the ship. Then there's no one to stop us either. Do you have information on the key electrical hubs coming into the city? Enough to know who to approach. We're getting cooperation under these circumstances. You only need cooperation if you're planning a controlled shutdown. Are you talking about triggering the blackout? Judith, if you can find a weak link, I can help you get the job done. Weak link? Well, it's time to call my dad again. All the power. That'd be a little less vexing if it wasn't for old company with their hand on the switch. If it were easy, Dad, I would have already done it. Department of Energy is our best bet. This is Senator Ryan Carr. I need urgently to speak to Scotty Owen. You got that, too? Got it. The Anacosta Junction Transformer Yard, 345 to 138 kilovolts. No one says that's the weak link. I don't understand how it works, but he says if we lose that, the whole metropolitan grid will shut down. It's basic supply and demand. If we choke off the supply at Anacostia Junction, then the rest of the system can't carry the necessary power, and the whole thing trips before it blows. What well, counts as a choke off? I guess we better go find out. Dad, don't go proving that you're really mortal. I really don't want to know. Considering the circumstances, I know this is going to sound ludicrous, but uh, it's nice to know that my children still need me. Come on, Judith, answer the phone. I need someone to monitor the thermal imagery from the GOES-12 satellite. Stay here during the storm? I calculate we got enough 1.5 degrees off the average temperature to keep this storm from obliterating the city, but I gotta have someone to keep tracking the temperature and feed it back to my pager. Can't we ask someone at FEMA to handle that? I'm not officially authorized to do this. Doc, sign me up for the death ride. <laughs> looks like. We're danger to him. Let's find a way out of here before they decide to do something about it. I've been trying to get us out of here since we arrived. Okay, enough. Enough. Do your ears feel funny? I think the air has changed. Oh, you think they're pumping something into here? No. But it's a hurricane. That's a low pressure system. All the air is being sucked out of the building. And if the air can get out, so can we.
escort you out of here. We can always be here with the captain's just going over. Be in my heart to leave here for you. Of course we got the brunt of the storm with all the hot air in Washington. This from the king of hot air himself. Yeah, I said some things. And still there's some things I wish I had said. I have every intention of getting out of here. I didn't have a chance to see him. If I don't make it out, I hate my mother's meat, but at least you got that off your chest. I collect garden gnomes. I steal them, actually, from other people's gardens. Really? You smell that? Yeah, that's gas. Let's go. Let's go. shop foreman can you take me to your control room i'm an engineer i i know who you are and i read your article on power problems in the new millennium well ted we got a whole new kind of power problem now can you take me to your control room i've used beam authorization codes to retask go satellite i'll downlink thermal imagery of dc every three minutes i'm automating a feature us as text pagers so it'll go by satellite all i have to do is press this little button and we are totally <laughs> Offline, what's going on? The T1 line's down. How? Why? The ammo's fixed it a bunch of times, but it just keeps coming loose. Do you know where it is? Yeah, I do. I'm gonna need to get some kind of authorization. From who? Everyone is gone. If we hesitate, we'll be with Ted. Listen to me. Yesterday, my only child was kidnapped. On that bus? So do you really think I would be standing here trying to talk a total stranger into going against his professional instincts if I didn't know that I was right? They're not up here, but they couldn't have gotten far. Let's go! OK, 
Okay, Pathfinder, what now? The wind's coming from there. Okay, why don't you follow up rear and make sure nobody gets lost? Why don't you follow up the rear? Just do it, okay? district until we're there. I got somebody feeding us satellite data and I'll keep doing it until we hit the target. Okay, you're in. I can't hear them yet, but I'm on their scent. If they try to turn back, they're not getting past me. Okay, guys, just go right here. Just stay right there. You know when the chips are down, you want heck of a partner. I don't want to run your parade too loudly. Oh, we may have more trouble when we get out of this building. You know what? I'm glad you two about Romy. I really am. But if you don't shut the hell up, you're going to get us all killed. Find shelter and just wait here, okay? Get back in the corner. Hi. This one stupid idea. You always want to be the leader when it's easy, Peter, but for once in your life, shut the hell up. Keeps on ticking. Really? In spite of everything, you are a little bit of a stud, aren't you? Okay. Just being paranoid. There's nothing to worry about. It's an old building. I used to build these babies great back then. Another what? Me, Melody. 
doing? Trust me. Senator Ryan Carr in Washington, D.C. I'm trying to get word out to as many nations as possible so you don't suffer the devastation that we're suffering right now. We have scientific evidence that a citywide blackout is the only way to prevent triggering it. An overview of this research is on its way to you now. Ross. Ross, come on, wake up. Wake up, Ross! Wake up! We gotta get out of here! Oh, God! Judith! Gavin! We're in an accident! Ross is unconscious! I can't get him out of here! And the, the, the car's starting to smoke! Hold on, I'm coming! As fast as I can! and an ocean of air. I guess the ladder's not an option. Very shaky island. Shut up, I'm thinking. Please tell me you're as brilliant as you are hot. God, I didn't mean that. I'm so panic talking. You didn't mean that. Then why should I risk life and limb to save you? You are so hot. Right then? Shut up. What is this crouching tiger hidden Billy? Better watch and learn, because we ain't going down the ladder. You brought me up here for this? Well, you know, there's that, but I just kind of wanted to see you. I kind of missed you. Half the city's down. What's our reading now? It's not enough. We gotta keep going. My arms are made of rubber. Here's the plan. Get 
tie you in to the rope. Is your daddy a sailor or something? No. I know a little better Japanese rope art. Like her, Demi? No. No. Demi. Okay. Hold on tight. I like my life depends on it or something. But she can say with just one word. Thank you, Dr. Duffy. Oh, where's your backup generator? I suppose you're gonna be wanting to take care of that right this second. Pretty much. Judith! My seatbelt's stuck! Yes, I know! Judith, give me that. The car's on fire! There's an extinguisher in the back! Not there! It was! Find it! <gasps> What are you doing? I agreed to shut it down, not crash it. It's still not enough. The last reading is 80.6. I don't know why, but this thing has stopped updating. We gotta do something, and we gotta do it now. Come with me. Don't worry about it! The jet is protected in this specially reinforced shed! Nothing good! Could possibly! Oh, Russ is gonna kill me for not getting the data! Of course, because I didn't get him the data! I would probably destroy the whole city while I'll be dead anyway! you want, but not how you want. Because wherever that power surges, it's going to be very ugly. It's a brand new car! I knew I should have leased! Give us the numbers that we need. It's working. It's working! The temperature isn't dropping enough. We're still not there. It's only two tenths of a degree. Can we get a little help up there? What's that saying, Ted? God helps those who help themselves, right?
fell. I think I broke my leg. Where, where, where's Stuart? Where is everyone? It's took clear. Stuart went after them. They're the ones that need help. Go! No! You need to stay with him. We'll find Stuart and Mira. Okay. I'm inside with Jeff, all right? Okay, come on. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Okay, here? I'll be back. Okay. This is Tornado, right outside the building. That snow is in a hole! You better hope it does. through a lot. I've been hard on you guys, but not anymore. It's all behind us. So all it took was a storm from hell and lunatics with guns? Yeah, well, that and your mom. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Not only is she hot, but she's like totally available. <laughs> Dude, it's a joke. I'm kidding. Stuart, say hi to Grandpa. Grandpa?
Argue all you want, but I'd say the proof is in the pudding. Many of us have suffered tremendous loss. There have been sacrifices and there have been victories. As you know, all of the kidnapped children have survived. But we've done more than survive. We have grown through this adversity. The capital is open for business. FEMA is fully operational, and we are better prepared than ever to not only face such extreme weather, but to even mitigate it. I hope you'll excuse me if I give a special round of thanks to my father, Senator Ryan Carr, who rode the storm out in the Congressional Building, fearlessly working to get Dr. Duffy's message out to the world. The cities of London and Helsinki directly owe their existence to his efforts. Thanks, Dad. Now, wherever storms like this appear... Hey, guys, we need more sandwiches. 80 more people just arrived. How many? 80. Oh, sorry. Yeah, here we go. Stuart. We're living in a cave. Your mom's doing a great job. We've changed as well. This is your place? Yeah, well, it's a living. Or it was. You? It all makes sense. Now, I couldn't understand these feelings I was having. I mean, you're, you're one of Ross's eggheads, but underneath that education, beats a redneck heart. Are you making a pass at me? No. The biggest storm in history has gone by. You're here with me. Doesn't get more romantic than that. I can handle the truth. You have a chance. No, you don't. If you don't stop pussyfooting around and get on with it. Until we undo the damage we've done to our environment, you have my promise that FEMA will be at the forefront to avert and contain any disaster we must still endure. FEMA will be there every step of the way the day that I look forward to, when we're hardly needed at all. Thanks to the efforts of so many, today brought something new.